Deputy Supervisor will try and take over if I falter. Again, welcome to the public hearing. I'd like to announce our emergency exits of the building would be to your left, to your right, to the far end of the building, to so this main entrance door here. Those are the three main exits of the building in case of emergency. The restrooms are to the back, right in there, men's and ladies. Um, I'd like to ask you to turn all of your cell phones either to an alert mode, vibrate, uh, to cut down on the noise in the room, please. Um, I'd like to take this pleasure to introduce the town board members, myself, Tom Bowes, as supervisor. To my immediate left is our deputy supervisor, Dave Keebler, Councilman Scott Gable, Howard Bukes, Councilman, Charlie Schott, Councilman, and of course our town clerk is Janet Fromm. The advertising for this hearing was legally noticed in the Sullivan County Democrat, on our town website, on the town bulletin board. Copies of the comprehensive plan for which this public hearing is about were available at the town clerk's office, still are available, and also on the town website. This hearing will not be a question and answer session. We will record all of your comments. There are rules, if you haven't picked up a guideline of the rules of this public hearing, there are copies at each of the signing tables, please do so. At this time, I would like to ask this deputy supervisor to go over those rules with Okay. Okay, again, make sure your cell phones are turned off. Uh, okay, wait to be called. Uh, speakers will be called in, in order of sign-ups. If you have uh, signed up to speak, please stay in your seat until your name is called. When called, please come to the podium and address the board, not the audience. Before making your comments, identify yourself and where you reside for the record. If you are speaking for an organization, identify the organization. Please speak clearly at a measured pace. This will help the board members to hear your comments. Each speaker will be given two minutes to speak. There will be a time clock visible right there. You can see your time. This limit is designed to assure that everyone who wants to speak will have the opportunity. Transferring of time from one speaker to another will not be permitted. Everyone who signed up to speak will be given the opportunity to do so tonight. Please be courteous to your fellow citizens and the members of the town board. Please speak to the issues. All comments should be addressed to the board and not to other persons in the audience. There will be no debate or answering of questions raised as part of this hearing. Please do not interrupt speakers or engage in personal attacks. Booing, applauding, or discourteous behavior will not be tolerated and could result in expulsion from the hearing. Please avoid repetition. If a previous speaker has already offered the same comment as you, when your turn is called, you can tell the board that you agree with the comment of the previous speaker without repeating the comment in full detail. This will keep the hearing moving so that all speakers will be able to give their comments before the evening goes late. Thank you for your cooperation. Just before we start, are there any questions on the guidelines? We want to be clear on this. If not, we'll begin and we'll ask for the first speaker name to be called. First speaker, Malcolm Andrew. There you go. Okay. Second speaker, Jeff Hello, everyone. Thank you, board, for all your hard work. My name is Malcolm Andrew. I'm at 732 Messenger Lair Road, Calhoun Center. And I guess my two cents on the plan is something I have friends who live over in Pennsylvania and I've spent some time over there. And if you go over there 11 o'clock at night, there's like trucks all over the place and um, it's just a big scene. My friend lives on a little dirt road. They can hardly get off the road because there's so much traffic on that road. Um, they did make a little bit of money on, um, you know, for using their property and stuff like that. But they said uh, it's not been that great, but they hoped it didn't happen to us over here. So 
that's what I have to say. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker will be? Dan Hart. I won't step on anyone else's toes. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Ann Hart. I own a property and a business in Youngsville. Um, while there are many aspects of the proposed comprehensive plan that are worthy of comment, I'd like to take this opportunity to comment on just one of them. Page 38 of the proposed plan contains a section entitled Natural Gas Drilling in the Town of Calhoun Comprehensive Plan Update. There's language there that take no takes note that the majority of people who responded to just the one survey you talk about in the plan made negative comments about gas drilling in town and insufficiently adopts to address, and then you, uh, the plan insufficiently adopts to address these comments by making the following statement. I'm sure you know it. So that the important resources identified in this comprehensive plan update are maintained in the future the town will aggressively work with the res regulations set forth by the New York State DEC on any industrial land use permit being reviewed in the town of Calhoun. This means staying informed as the permitting process moves forward at the state level, understanding how the town may participate in the process and exercising our right to participate to the fullest extent possible to ensure safety and eliminate adverse impacts that may be associated with natural gas drilling or any other high intensity uses. Here's some facts that don't seem to have been considered. Staying informed as the per permitting process moves forward, one of the lines in that. The 2011 draft ESCAIS um, has this to say, and there's a section of the state environmental conservation law. It requires that the permittee notify any affected local government and surface owner prior to commencing operations. Many local governments have requested notification earlier in the process, although it is not required by law or regulation. The department would notify local governments of all applications for high volume hydraulic fracturing in the locality using a continuously updated database of local government officials and electronic notification system that would bo both be developed for this purpose, end quote. That's what the environmental conservation law says. This doesn't indicate that a town participates in that process per at all. Um, the town may participate in the process, however, and exercise its rights to participate to the fullest extent possible by its land use regulations. The only way to safely eliminate adverse impacts associated with natural gas drilling is not to allow it. This is an unexplored avenue in the proposed comprehensive plan. To quote Acting Supreme Court Justice Donald Serio Jr. in the case of the Cooperstown Hosting Incorporation. Sorry, I'm, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you for your comment. Okay. Our next commenter will be. Can you help me? <laughs> Good evening. Uh, thank you very much for holding this hearing and uh, giving us uh, all a chance to speak about the plan. I'd like to start by giving some kudos to you and to the, uh, to the town council and to the comprehensive planning committee. I thought it was a balanced study. I thought that all voices were heard and they were respected in that study. Uh, I thought that the discussion was thorough and I thought it was clearly written and presented. It presented what every rural community in America struggles with. How can we strengthen our commercial tax base without jeopardizing our rural natural environment? And it is discussed well in there. And it is of course the issue that you struggle with almost daily. I hope that we all know, and of course I'm speaking to you, but I, I, to my fellow citizens too, I hope you all know and appreciate the necessity of economic development for our community and for all rural communities. Even though our property taxes, as measured against our median household income, are oppressively high, among the top 1% in a number of studies in the nation. Our town operates on a shoestring budget, as you know. I thought many times in the plan you spoke to this, directly or implied. On page 8 you say, every aspect of life in our town <coughs> depends on a strong local economy. And you want to say amen after that. Economic development may mean gas drilling, fracking for our community, and if it does, I fear that we are ill-prepared to fulfill the primary objective as stated in that comprehensive plan, and you'll remember, it is to preserve the rural nature of Calicoon and protect its natural environment. What preparation and pre-planning have occurred? Have we met and interviewed municipal leaders in other areas that have already begun gas drilling? 
What have we learned from their mistakes? All kinds of issues need to be addressed, not just the water table preservation, but the impact on our roads and our bridges and our infrastructure, our air, and our noise pollution. Social impacts of the man camps, of course, are also. We have to stop it. I know you do, and I was Sorry, just getting wound up, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out first. Hi. I know we all want economic development in a community in an area that needs economic development. And I also hope that we're also really involved in and care about the environment. But I, there's one, there's like one word that's hyphenated that I think we should remember when we talk about the fracking issue. And that word is man camps. Okay, man camps are well known all over the country to be like crazy situations in boom towns where there's fracking, there's meth labs, there's strippers, there's the gas gold rush, and it's all over the internet, it's all over the news, it's in the New York Times, and I think we have to remember, the, do we want man camps in our town? Like trailers of men who are like up all night, and like adrenalized, and then when they, when they finish work at like four o'clock in the morning, we need entertainment, then they're gonna be plaguing our environment. So yes, all the environmental issues are reasons not to have fracking here, but the man camps is, it, are something that really scare me and should scare, I think, all the citizens. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Our next speaker will be? Tracy Gates. Tracy Gates? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I've uh, been a resident in uh, the town of Calicoon for over 20 years now, and my husband and I um, bought a place up here because of the absolute beauty of, of uh, Sullivan County and this community, this town, um, and also because I, we really found the people so wonderful, and our neighbors um, have been wonderful these past 20 years, and we've been trying to be good neighbors ourselves, and I, I think that's kind of the the theme for me is that it's, um, I, I worry of course that, um, that if one neighbor makes a decision about, about something um, that you know, another neighbor disagrees with, that, um, that we'll have a problem and I don't want that to be a problem. I'm, um, I'm uh, uh, this is a really um, kind of explosive issue and I, I don't want it to come between me and my neighbors, but. Um, I feel very strongly that um, we're making a big mistake by <coughs> um, allowing fracking into this area just for the, the beauty of this area that we're so proud of. I, I think everyone here would agree about that. Um, and I, I, while I, I mean, my heart goes out to people that, that need jobs in this area, but I think there are much better, safer, much safer ways to create jobs. Thank you. Comments. <clears throat> Our next speaker. Barry Goldberg. Could you um, let us know where you where you live when you come up here? Okay? I live with my wife, who just. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Barry Goldberg, and as my wife said, we've had a home up in the area for over twenty years. And I do want to reiterate something she said that um, our neighbors have been something that's been very important to us and, and they've been so welcoming to us uh, from the time we moved here uh, 20 years ago to today. Um, on the radio recently there was a reporter discussing fracking and he said that uh, maybe we need to think about gas drilling the same way we think about air travel. We know there are risks to flying but the risks might be acceptable. And I thought that was um, a helpful comparison, but maybe not the way the reporter intended. The, the difference between the risks of gas drilling and the risks of airline travel, to my mind, are exactly the problem, since if you believe the risks associated with stepping on a plane are too high, you can choose to stay home. But with gas drilling, it's different, because if your neighbor decides to accept those risks of gas drilling, 
you're no longer safe in your own home. The, their decision puts your property and your health at risk. Now, of course, neighbors have always had different views and, on countless issues, but no matter how strongly those views uh, have been expressed, I think beneath any disagreements was this common understanding. It was, there was a common principle that was at the heart of being part of a community. And that principle is simple and it's old and it just says that one neighbor do no harm to another neighbor. <coughs> Gas drilling's tearing communities apart because it violates that basic principle, changes something at the very core of what it means to be a community. This plan and these resolutions, because they accommodate an inherently harmful method of gas extraction, endorse the idea that one neighbor has the right to put another neighbor at risk. And that idea, to me, is not just fundamentally wrong, it's just deeply destructive to the very meaning of community. And it's that idea which I think the majority of the residents, sorry, is that for me, um, uh, residents of this town have, have repeatedly rejected. Sorry to go over. Oh, thank you for your comments. Thank you. Okay. Next speaker. Joe Lafferty. Again, just as a matter of record, please, would you state the residence? <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, my name is Doug Lafferty. I live at 576 Gulf Road, <coughs> just south of Roscoe. I'm going to be quick because I've lost my voice. Um, I, I, after uh, worrying and complaining about the prospect of fracking this area, I just wanted to take this opportunity to finally have a chance to go on public record like the rest of my uh, uh, sit fellow citizens here to make it very, very clear that, that my wife my, and myself, the people we know, we are just resolutely against the idea of fracking in this area. Um, I think you always measure risks against rewards or rewards against risks. And to me, this is a huge risk involved in this, which is essentially poisoning our water table. Uh, from everything I've read about the methodology behind fracking, it's just, it just it seems crazy dangerous um, and bound to fail at some point somewhere. And I would hate to see that happen to us in our communities and not just lose the value of our homes, but possibly our health as well. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. I feel better. Thanks. Next speaker. Mike, Mike Breland. Mike Vreeland from Youngsville. There is no silent majority in the town that is pro-fracking. I've heard that argument from several pro-fracking people. That's a false argument. The board has heard the voices, the passionate voices of the residents in surveys, letters, and at meetings. The majority of those voices are against fracking, or at least for the restricting of fracking. It is the board's responsibility to reflect the wishes of the residents. I would urge the board to consider these voices and remove the pro-fracking language from the comp plan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reilly. Next speaker. Sharon Green. <coughs> Sharon Green, Youngsville, New York. I'm a resident and a business owner. I have read the draft of the comprehensive plan. The plan <coughs> should recognize that the town has the constitutional right to prohibit high-impact industrial activities such as shale gas ex extraction. The town should immediately begin the proceedings to enact such an ordinance and move forward with the ban of high-impact industri industri industries in the town. Um, my grandparents came here, my grandfather came here at the end of the Depression. He had lost everything that he worked so hard for in, in America. And he came here for the cure for tuberculosis. He was very sick, and he was one of the fortunate people who survived. He came here for the fresh air and clean water. Who will want to come here and raise their families and enjoy our beautiful Catskills after the effects of fracking has taken its toll on our environment? Thank you so much. Thank you. OK, thank you. Next speaker, please. Thomas Perkins. <coughs> Uh, good evening, Tom Person. I live by Lake Gap. Uh, first of all, I want to say to DEC with your SGIS, I believe they're really a tough organization. The guys I've worked with on search and rescue was doing one of them once. They found a dump, person got a $15,000 fund. Them guys, they make their money do it, they're good. Please listen to what they're doing They come out with a new program. <coughs> roads, the gas companies need the roads, they're going to fix them. Go to town of Kershakton and you can see what they did there with the pipeline. Farmers are 1% of our people. I see there's some in the group. 
I'm talking to guys that have been here 100, 150 years. They need the help. We want to eat. Better be overweight like me. Help them do what they do and listen to them, really. They, they're the people that really count, not the people who make the money and come here and then set up a couple pig farms or something else. And so we all worry about the neighbors fighting each other. My answer to this is consider the source. I mean, people, they don't even want to say good afternoon to you. They just want to argue with you half the time. And I'm not going to go too much more into that. The big reason I'm here is I have a couple sons, a couple daughters. My one daughter lives in Brooklyn. She can't wait to earn enough money that when she retires, she move back here. My other sons, they have good jobs. They work in the prison. They have families. They're saying the kids are going to college. They're going to have to move out. I'd like to see my grandkids stay here forever. You know, this is thing. A lot of people don't have kids. So they're, only, they're only a little green spot on earth. <coughs> so be it. But I'd like to see it for the future. Uh, my, I have a sister lives in San Antonio. Gas is big there. There's all sorts of big towns bringing up with uh, hospitals, doctors, schools, everything in it. And her big thing was the water. And I said, oh boy, what's happening now? Well, she can't water her lawn with the droughts, but they can put the water in the wells. Which she says, the prosperity, what the well, uh, gas people are doing for schools and communities, it's well worth the uh, hardship she's putting up with. Uh, and uh, one thing, last thing I want to talk about is over in Hortonville, the thing on the, what they call the Valvatory, and the money that comes back to the fire departments, the schools, the towns, everybody else. That's for two minutes. Thank you very much, and keep doing a good job you do. Thank you for your comment. Next speaker. <coughs> Rodney Gable. I've lived in this town for 63 years, been a taxpayer for 42 years on 21 DeWitt Flats Road and other parcels. And uh, I want to commend the committee, the town board, for the work you've done on this plan. My understanding is that a comprehensive plan, and I've been through this process a couple times myself, is not a town law or an ordinance. It's a living document that is subject to change. And I commend the committee and the folks on the town board for not using rash judgment and jumping to conclusions. I think you're doing the right thing by waiting to see what the DEC comes up with and the state of New York rules on, and then you can do what I know will be the right thing. The survey that we've talked about here, the surveys, the survey that really counts in this town was a couple years ago, and we got another one coming up when you folks were elected and asked us to represent us. That's the real survey. The rest of them, uh, you can give credibility to it. There's just enough open areas that uh, you, know, you can question. But when you sign in that book and you vote, that's the real deal. So thank you for what you've done and continue to do. And I'd also like you to pass that on to the committee. They play a big role in this. Thank you. Thanks for your comments. Our next speaker. Jeremy Neenan. I also have a frog in my throat. <laughs> uh, I'm not speaking so much about the issues of industrialization or fracking. I'm speaking more to the issue of process. Uh, the Executive summary, first page, says the uh, committee uh, held three public workshops and to solicit public input. I don't see public input in this document in terms of fracking or uh, industrialization. Um, on page six, it says, using research conducted by the Comprehensive Plan Committee and the public input generated throughout the plan's development, it sets forth a framework. Where is the public input in the plan? On page eight, further, uh, we worked hard to anticipate potential challenges at a certain time uh, and to allocate the policy recommendations that thoroughly address gas drilling and other industries. It doesn't address it. The residents have spoken, and the plan is not addressing that issue. Uh, on page 49, further, in objectives, goal number six, continue to ensure that elected and appointed officials are sensitive and responsible to the diverse needs of our residents and that the town government retains the confidence of the residents. If the committee and the board is not responsive to the residents through numerous meetings, uh, polls, etc., 
how could the uh, elected officials maintain the confidence of the residents? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mary Lewis. My name's Mary Lewis, I live in Calicoon Center. I brought a list that was compiled up to January 29th this year, which means it's current, and it's up to now. It is of 804 damaged properties and damaged people from where fracking for gas has been done. I hope some members of this town board will read over this list and see what such an accident-prone industry can do and why we do not need it included in our comprehensive plan. I, it, I would not have a business with this bad accident-proneness <coughs> on my property. Next speaker, please. Al Larson. My name is Al Larson. I reside both in Livingston Manor and Bethel, New York, and I've been here for over 71 years. I'd like to commend the Calicoon Board for its cautious handling of its comprehensive plan and the potential for banning of gas drilling or using its authority over roads and zoning for the same end. There are local towns that have already done so and a few planning to do so. Realize manipulating the law with one obvious objective, ba banning drilling is in itself against the law. You cannot legally ban one specific industry. The well, we will permit logging trucks trucks transporting mobile homes, manufactured homes, feed trucks, etc., in an effort to keep our local economy flowing won't fly. I spoke with a gas company rep in Albany a few weeks ago. They are in the talking stages of potential lawsuits against the towns that have manipulated the law or done an outright banning. Opening the town of Calicoon to unnecessary lawsuits that you probably would lose is not in the best interest of your most important responsibility, the fiduciary responsibility to your taxpayers. Time is on your side. Even if Cuomo issued permits tomorrow, it will be years before they reach Sullivan County. By then, the towns that acted in haste will either reverse their decisions or be embroiled in very costly lawsuits that none of us can afford. I, I would say continue the way you are. Prudence is the better, better part of valor. If there are going to be mistakes made, let Bethel, Tustin, Lumberland, and the others who worked in haste pay the price. Don't let your Calicoon taxpayers pay it. Keep up the good work. Thanks for your comments. Our next speaker. Evelyn Weissman. I agree with Rodney Gable's remarks. Thank you for your comment. Our next speaker. Wes Gillingham. Hi, I'm Wes Gillingham, <clears throat> the program director of Catskill Mountain Keeper. I actually don't live in the town of Calicoon, although this is the community that I associate with. My mailbox is in the town of Calicoon. And I represent Catskill Mountain Keeper, which is a roughly 30,000 <coughs> member organization throughout the six counties of the Catskills. Um, I want to point out that I am going to a meeting tomorrow um, with organizations from all across the United States, from Western Colorado, uh, Bridging the Gulf is one organization, Center for Coalfield, Coalfield Justice, the Grand Bayou Village, representatives from Louisiana, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, uh, multiple folks from Alaska, and these are all people that represent communities that are dealing with extraction technologies, whether you're talking about coal, natural gas, oil, deep shore drilling. I just visited a community in Louisiana that's dealing, that's 60% six, that's unemployment because they were all shrimp fishermen. These are the kinds of impacts that come 
with extraction technologies. And right now we are in a regulatory process that has become extremely convoluted in the state. Um, the town has the responsibility to be prudent, wait for complete information to deal with this, um, to deal with the situation that's coming down the pike. We do not have a handle on what New York State regulations are, how protective they are. People around here are very concerned about uh, flooding. The example with the last SGEIF was a, a press release from the DEC that said, no open pits, it will all be in steel containers or a centralized containment facility. But then you dig into the regulations and you realize that a centralized containment facility is just a really big open pit. Those are the kind of things that we need um, to address on the state level. And on the local level, there's a lot of language in here that goes forward saying in the event of heavy industrial use, um, new large scale industrial activity, new heavy industrial activity situated in the town. That's all language that uh, foresees and expects that it is coming <coughs> to our town. Uh, the <coughs> comprehensive plan, I'm out of time, but I would suggest striking language that's pro-drilling, and I would also suggest taking out language Thank that just assumes that it will come. Thank you for your time, Mr. Billing. Our next speaker. Barbara Winfield. Hi, I'm Barbara Winfield, and I live in Jeffersonville, <coughs> and I work in Sullivan County. Uh, I. In my opinion, I can, we cannot sacrifice our natural resources in the name of economic development. We will all lose in the end. I'm against fracking, and I'm against the man camps and the pollution that will follow. I wanted to go on record to say this. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. <coughs> Brothers, I live in Calicoon Center. Um, page 37 of the April version of the draft comprehensive plan is entitled Natural Gas Drilling in the Town of Calicoon Comprehensive Plan Update. Here, the uh, initial survey results, the one that you made a couple years ago, are presented and people's written concerns are discussed. The topic ranked highest as not important to have in the town was gas drilling. The section ends so that the important resources identified in this comprehensive plan update are maintained in the future, the town will aggressively work with the regulations set forth by DEC to ensure safety and eliminate adverse impacts that may be associated with high intensity uses, including but not limited to natural gas drilling. We'll make it simple. In keeping with the plan's stated goals and all the surveys that have been conducted since that first one, include in the plan a ban on high impact industries. Thanks. Thank you. Are you collecting these? Yes, we'll take them. <laughs> Thank you. Our next speaker. Charles Peterson. Charles Petersheim from uh, Eldred, New York. <clears throat> the man camp issue just strikes me. I, I, I went to the, the, the meetings in Lumberland. Highland, Narrowsburg, Bethel, because our business spans those communities. But the man camp thing, the first thing that would happen <clears throat> is the hills would be completely booked. The second thing that would happen is Fosterdale Motor Lodge would be completely booked. Victoria's would be completely booked. Every hotel in the area would be completely booked for years. Yeah. Then maybe you get a man camp. So first you would have economic development, but that's really not my point. Um, <clears throat> Dave Keebler and I, <clears throat> when he was the building inspector of the town of Lumberland, and I was building homes there, got to know each other, inspection by inspection, month by month, year by year, very natural evolution of getting to know each other, right when the gas drilling thing started hitting the fan. He owns 120 acres, I build second homes. We're coming at it from completely different completely different angles. And uh, <clears throat> I've never met a more thoughtful, well thought out process than Dave <clears throat> and I discussed in kitchens of various houses over the last three and four years. And I have all the confidence in the world that this board has probably has approached it of all the towns I've seen most cautiously, most prudently, most thoughtfully. And uh, I think your you know your living history. I think it's a tough position to be in. But I encourage you to um, 
continue um, being thoughtful. Um, Dave owns 120 acres. He could only talk about how much he didn't want to hurt his land. He would never hurt his land. He would never hurt his neighbors. You know, all the things that people say that are going to happen, it's on the forefront of Dave's mind. I don't know who else owns land on the board, but <coughs> it's the same issues, different conclusions, and obviously the regulations are coming down the pipe here shortly, and I think it's a good time to, good time to wait. And uh, as someone that would possibly be harmed by the, and has been harmed by the prospect of gas drilling, um, I'm willing to make a little bit of sacrifice um, for the economic well-being of, you know, my neighbors. Thank you. Thanks for your comments. Next speaker. Hi, I'm Nancy Lee from Calhoun Center. Um, I'm here as a citizen for all of us, but I understand the intent uh, following what Mr. Petersheim said, the intent of this board and the committee has been excellent. You're looking out for us. But I think as a citizen, I want to say that I served on the planning board. I served um, on zoning issues. I was in your seats. So I, I understand the intent. And I appreciate all the hard work that went into it. But the bottom line is there are people in Pennsylvania who allow gas drilling, or who did not allow gas drilling, and their properties have been damaged. Their homes are unlivable. Their animals cannot be fed. Um, so in the end, I feel that uh, the intent is good, but the outcome may not. And the, the draft, as it states now, says that the, the town will be looking out for all the uh, negative effects of <coughs> industrial uh, activity. However, when the, when the negative impacts are determined, it'll be too late. Um, so I'm here to plead our case to say that um, having just retired as a teacher, I know that President Obama says the most important thing, in, in due respect to our uh, retired superintendent, Mr. Hilton, the most important thing is who stands in front of the classroom. So I'm appealing to you gentlemen as the um, as the elected officials, you are the first line of defense. You are the people in the trenches. We look to you. You are the first defense, and you are our last defense. So please do what you need to do to protect all of us, because we only have one, one property. We only have this one earth, and only uh, one s set of criteria, which is our health, our well-being. So please do, do what you need to do for all of us. Thank you. Next Hard to follow my wife, but when I first um, heard about gas drilling about four years ago, I figured with uh, 90 acres I had some, I could make some money. That in this enthusiasm didn't last very long, as I did my research into the negative aspects of fracking. I couldn't just hope that things would work out. I said, hold on. What am I not being told? Some, what I'm not being told is someone can drill near my property and I can't stop them. The New York State Department of Health has no input into the health effects of gas drilling, even if it is known that the chemicals cause damage. I wasn't told that if I sold my land, no mortgage company would give a mortgage to a potential buyer. I, the town board, should be very cautious about how it handles what it does to our, with our community. Be people friendly, not gas company friendly. This is probably the most consequential thing that will happen in our community in a generation. It is the time when the facts must be considered. What carries the most weight is what is best for the majority of the community for now and for the next decades. Fortunately, more people are now doing the research uh, into the economic and health costs to communities. The federal, state, and local governments are beginning to do what should have been done long ago. I know this is not easy. We wish we could make a lot of money and drill and it would all be okay. That is not what will happen. In PA, 6% of the wells have a safety issue within the first year. Some properties have lost 90% of the value because of contaminated water. Everyone who has a home in the town of Calicoon should be concerned about the value of their home, their community, and the environment. Many don't want to think about that. But in the end, everybody really cares about their money and their community. 
uh, when, when that is about to be messed up, at least they should be forewarned. Tell them the truth. Ask them if they want to gamble with their home. Okay, one, one, half a second. <laughs> you should, you should uh, poll the people of the town and follow what they want. Thank you. Thanks for your comments. Our next speaker. Sonia Hedlund, I live in Calicoon Center. I do not support or agree with the provision in the draft plan in support of high impact industry. With about 20 other residents, I worked on another plan, a really fine plan. It was a plan to address the preservation of farmland. I would urge you to go back to that plan and look at economic development in terms of our agriculture. There are many things that we are, can do here that other counties are doing. We can move ahead on providing much more food for New York City. We can provide more food for, that we grow here for people who live here. And I think agriculture, keeping it strong, keeping it beautiful, will continue to provide business opportunities for people to come here. If Sullivan <coughs> County is full of horrible roads, man camps and the like, no one will visit us. No one will want to live in this place. And that part of our economy is based on tourism, and farms are necessary for that. And I urge you to look at the plan related to agriculture and think about economic development in terms of expanding farming. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Virginia Sunburn. Hi, my name is Virginia Sanborn, and I'm in Livingston Manor. Um, can't see. Uh, I am here uh, basically to say that I do not support the, uh, the plan for drilling. Um, and it's mostly because, because I became very uh, recently um, knowledgeable about uh, radon gas. I didn't know that, you know that would exist as part of the fracking. Um, also, radium-226 and 228, um, all known carcinogens. Um, and also, of course, all the drilling fluids that could be potentially um, hazardous. So uh, I'm concerned about those. <coughs> um, and also, I'm also concerned about uh, companies that are just going to make their money um, and then, you know, either dissolve or disappear, and then everyone is left with, you know, picking up the, the bill for the cleanup. Mm -hmm. So um, I know you can't do this, but uh, if there was some legislation that could be passed to require some kind of escrow for any fracking company where a percentage of the revenues or something <coughs> is put in escrow in some state fund where they can access it, so if they disappear, the taxpayers aren't going to be left with the bill. And that's it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker. Charles Sanborn. Is that that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, board members. My name is Charles Sanborn, and I'm a resident of Livingston Manor. And while I don't live in the ca town of Calicoon, uh, we do live at the bottom of the hill of the town of Calicoon. Uh, I'm also the owner of Cinder Track Bicycles, and, uh, and, and by default, an avid cyclist myself. Uh, one of the reasons that my wife and I moved up here was I love to be able to ride my road bicycle around here. Uh, I feel that uh, the introduction of uh, hydraulic fracturing and the truck traffic that would come along with it would be inconsistent with the, uh, with the goals of your plan uh, to uh, sustain the uh, environment um, and the nature of uh, Sullivan County, and uh, so incompatible. Um, also be bad for my business, uh, as I'm sure it would be bad for many other businesses in the area that rely on tourism. Uh, a lot of my customers are second homeowners and they also live up here because there's a lot fewer cars. I mean, we just come up here to escape the traffic. And I feel that uh, uh, the, uh, <coughs> uh, the traffic would not be just on Route 17 or the new interstate. This would be on very small secondary roads, uh, which would become overwhelmed, I believe. And uh, uh, you know, some people complain about the conditions of the roads now. Uh, I can only imagine, you know, what kind of condition I'll be in uh, when that kind of heavy industrial truck traffic starts traveling through this area. So uh, 
I don't think it's wise also to uh, create a situation where uh, you're uh, favoring one business at the expense of all the other pre-existing businesses. And certainly, uh, my heart goes out to the, uh, the dairy farmers in this area who have had a very tough time over the, probably the last 50 years. Uh, but uh, uh, I would hope that you know they wouldn't see this as a an alternative uh, to the very noble profession of dairy farming in Sullivan County, which I admire. So, uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Next speaker. Van Morrow. <coughs> um, good evening. My name is Van Morrow. I live in Chandley, and um, I own a business in Livingston Manor also. And I'm um, speaking tonight, getting my very <coughs> short chance uh, as a citizen who lives right across the street from the Krieger property where he has leased 186 acres, <coughs> and I live very close to that whole thing. And I live at a slightly higher elevation, and when I read about the amount of water that will be needed in the fracking process, I must wonder about my own well, not only the quantity of it, but if there is any accident that no one wants, of course, but if there's any accident, I don't know how the water will flow underground, and I feel, uh, as a private citizen, taxpayer, and that with that being the biggest investment of my life is my home, that um, it is being set up for, for a disaster if something happens. I don't know of any plans, and I haven't heard of any plans specifically if something happens. I'm all, I, I'm all for economic development, and I hear it all the time. I'm in business myself. <coughs> but if something happens, I do not know of any specific thing uh, to help those who will be hurt by it. Um, many here have spoken about renewable energy and farming and local agriculture, and I, need, I don't need to repeat that. Um, 30 seconds left. Um, I need to say that I was in Livingston Manor the day of the, the last big flood when the water was coming down the mountain, wondering all the time what if any, there were fluids in the ground and I can't imagine what it would be like to be at the bottom of that hill. And as my last point, I am hoping that anyone who's in any decision-making capacity on this entire thing, whether in this room or not, is not in a position to benefit from it in any way. Hey, thank you. Next speaker. Ann Englund. Hi, good evening. I'm Ann Englund, and I am a second homeowner, and I live in New York City and at 390 uh, North Branch Calcutt Center Road. Um, I speak to you as a second homeowner as well as a mom and a pediatrician. <laughs> um, I would say that, you know, I, before I adopted New York as my um, home over 35 years ago, I was from the Midwest, and I have cousins who still are dairy farmers in the Dakotas. So this fracking issue has been part of in my conscience for many, many years. Um, and I've followed the stories that everyone has quoted tonight. Um, so for me, as a mom and a pediatrician and, and, a, and a second homeowner, I'm really concerned about the beauty of the land when I bought here. I was concerned about what my stewardship toward the land should be, and that's what brings me here tonight, because I am worried that I have a responsibility, so that's what I'm trying to carry out. And I also feel like this is a place for my children to come, and they, uh, they <coughs> love it here, and it's, it's paradise. When the eagles fly through the valley, it, it stirs everyone in a special kind of way. But as a physician and thinking scientifically, what I'm most concerned about and want to say right here on the record is the imbalance between the risk that we all have been hearing about and the uncertainty that lies before us. And so I echo the feeling of other people here that I, I just believe we need to take, be cautious um, and not to jump ahead and to um, think of that concept of one property. I really like that, that it's all of ours and I think we all need to just 
pay heed to what um, our legacy is. Thanks. Thank you. John Eber. <coughs> Uh, my name is John Ebert, and I have lived in the town of Calicoon for well over 70 years. I have watched the township prosper and move forward in a professional and understanding way. I have read the comprehensive plan update through twice. I would like to thank the committee for their many, many hours of work to put this thing together. I wholeheartedly endorse this plan as written. I speak not only for myself, but for the silent majority of citizens in this township. We also have a minority group with a lot of mouth, money, and misinformation to slow progressive progress in this township. Please listen to the silent majority and improve this as written. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker. Earl Myers. <coughs> I'm Earl Myers. I tend to look at positives and negatives of everything that I ever studied. Uh, some of the positives we have here is you look at all the people that have made a living off of writing newsletters and uh, the media and stuff like that, but that's beyond things. Uh, the main point I'd like to try to make is that uh, fracking has been a major issue in the town of Calicoon and the town, uh, county of Sullivan. We have had a lot of arguments. There's been a lot of uh, people that have, are unfriendly to each other now. And it's getting to the point where Governor Como and Joe Martin should make a decision pretty soon because it's taken a huge toll on the community itself. Uh, I did some calculations. Uh, two square miles is what it takes to go and uh, frack a well. And that's 1,280 acres. And divide it into the amount of land in the town of Calicoon, it comes out about 25 wells. But you can't drill everywhere. So you got to drill only in the places where it's level enough, which eliminates the mountainsides. Uh, you can't drill in the floodplains. You can't drill in the wet, uh, wetlands. Uh, when you get all done, if there's 15 wells in the town of Calicoon, it would be a lot. Uh, as far as contaminated water, the state of Pennsylvania had a million wells that they went and they tested the water on. And out of the million wells, there was 100,000 of them that they got a notice back, don't drink that water. And this here was before fracking or anything else took place. There was another half a million that were contaminated, but you could drink it. To give you an idea of that, whoa, that was quick. Thank you for your time. Next speaker. Edward Alleys. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Edward Alley. I live in Jeffersonville. The board is to be commended in its refusal to be panicked by exaggerated and false, and I might add hysterical, claims by those who remain NIMBYs, even as all the outrageous claims are refuted by science. Most, most comments treat the drilling industry as being, as being the same as a, a brick and mortar. It's not true, of course. It's only a temporary activity, and it's only it's being conducted in various states without the millions, quote, and this is a quote, millions of toxic fluids, unquote, con contaminating the aquifers but in the process bringing a measure of, a, of economic benefits to the area and royalties <coughs> and taxes paid. Some of the comments, 40 towns in New York enacted bans. Many of these never see drilling anyway. 
giant well pads, they're only three to five acres, thousands of diesel trucks. When I was in Pennsylvania, I observed about six or eight trucks waiting to discharge their water at a well site. Millions of gallons of toxic chemicals, as though this were, well, millions of gallons of toxic chemicals. That's not so, it's millions of gallons of water with some chemicals. <coughs> I think that's all I have to say. I was going to add a note of levity by saying that I was here to complain about a neighbor's cat or uh, dog, but... Uh, <laughs> Another day. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Yeah. Nathan Swinberg. <laughs> Uh, Nathan Swenberg, North Branch. Uh, so I wanted to express my view opposing the language in the plan that paves the way for gas drilling and transient labor. And I wanted to talk about that from the perspective of property rights and property values. And so typically when you hear about opposition to fracking, you hear a lot about the environment, saving the planet, hugging the trees, protecting the bunnies. But I think that, you know, if a man has property and he wants to cut down the trees and shoot the bunnies, I'm all for that. Let him do that. But I think in this case, in the case of fracking, this is not, it, it's not an issue that affects individuals on their own land. Because you can be joined to a lease, because of the broader consequences to that, this issue is something that, affect, that can affect us all whether or not we want it. And it's that issue of choice and property rights that really concerns me. Because if you think about property, it's something that most people have their life savings in. They've worked their entire life. I've worked 20 years in a job that I hate so that I can have the house and the property that I have now so that I can go and do and enjoy activities on that land. And this comes, it wipes all that out. So I would just encourage the board to think strongly about the economic benefits of fracking versus the potential economic downfall on property value. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker. Ron Bernhardt. I actually wrote a letter to you folks that was too long for me to share tonight, so I want to leave you with copies and I'll email it to Janet if that's necessary. I tried to highlight a, a couple points here with my two minutes. Uh, I, I think I'll start with my final point. I'm passionately urging you to legislate more responsibly. Take your time. If indeed you're in favor of fracking, come out and clearly state it. Tell us why, but at least respond to the concerns of your constituents who have nothing to gain and everything to lose when the rigs move into town. This has been my initial request, but I've heard no mention of it since. It's called just compensation. If one resident's mineral rights are so precious and protected, then another's safety and protection on their property should also be considered beforehand. All the communities ravaged by toxic mess share many things in common. The one I want you to react to is the property value of homes and acreage that are likely to plummet in a worst case scenario. They're often left having to flee for their health. Water is essential to life. They have private wells. There's nobody to help them. They're forced to practically give away their home and land. This has happened in many, many states. That's the scenario I'm ready myself to deal with if Cuomo okays this and then you guys say, okay, if Cuomo did it, that's our plan. I know that all these folks guarantee that it could never happen. I put a couple of formulas together. I'll share one with you. Uh, I have a simple formula for you to consider for those who lease their land and a company that profits from their gas deposits to share the burden of responsibility for losses suffered by others. Insurance would be an easier option, but the companies have seen this mess and they want nothing to do with it. They should have no trouble agreeing to take responsibility. Both parties and the legislators they've paid handsomely, and I'm talking about the oil companies, insist it's preposterous to think there may be environmental problems from this completely safe process, but they're the only ones who believe this. The formula is take your assessed value of people's property before fracking, and then the assessed value after contamination, divide it by two, and the owner gets some of that money from, like the, the lady from Matter said, from some kind of fund we could set up. What's there to lose? None of you would agree to allow this if you weren't completely sure it was safe. Why would you not try to create a plan that's fair moving forward just in case? Should a few constituents and the companies get all the profits and walk away without helping their neighbors who are forced to leave the area. I hope you please read this and consider it as you're making your final decision. Thank you. Your comments, huh? Next speaker. Joe Wall. Can 
name's Joe Law, and I live in Jeffersonville. Uh, everything I wanted to say, I think, has been said. So I just want to thank the board and the committee for everything you've done amid the turmoil. Uh, you've shown your responsibility and your diligence, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for your comments, sir. My name is Jill Weiner. I live in the town of Calicoon. I want to say it's very disappointing to read this latest iteration of the comp plan and realize that the town is still assuming powers that it does not have and is abdicating its responsibility to enact powers that it does hold by willfully ignoring the constitutional right to ban high-impact industrial activities. Shale gas extraction is akin to an unfunded mandate, <coughs> except in this case, we don't have to participate. The town has the power to restrict or prohibit industry, including gas drilling and fracking. It's clear that allowing our town to become an industrial extraction zone will have an adverse effect on our property values that in turn will lower our tax base. It's irresponsible for you to approve a comprehensive plan that will allow for gas development. In Monday's budget testimony, uh, Commissioner Martin said there'll be an impact on local, local governance governments but insisted the cost could not be analyzed and I want to know are you ready to incur unidentified costs and pass them on to us are you really willing to gamble with our tax base our health and our economy uh, I've done a little research about the process here and I, I want to say that it seems to me that the town is treading on very thin ice with no record of approval of the comp plan committee of the plan no record of where the agricultural farmland protection came from it seems that the town is operating completely outside of the record and without any legal or moral basis to do so. And um, just speaking of records, at least 484 stakeholders have gotten, these are property owners, business owners, residents, have gone on record with their opinion about gas drilling and 474 of us say no. So this plan must be amended to remove all positive references to gas drilling and high impact industrial activity and transient worker housing which I don't, I don't know how transient worker housing got into that plan in the first place. I mean, that's a whole other question. Um, I have a spreadsheet of the 484 uh, stakeholders with uh, affirming their residency and also some comments from some other <coughs> residents and a petition and uh, about 30 letters that went to the county that okay. you may not have a record of. <clears throat> Thank you for your comment. Our next speaker is Thomas Schmidt. My name is Thomas Schmidt. I'm also a member of the Town of Calicoon Planning Board. And uh, <clears throat> I've read the um, the uh, comprehensive plan quite thoroughly and um, I've been with the first uh, comprehensive plan that was completed in early 1980 <clears throat> and this document here seems to cover pretty much everything that you can think of it's very informative and I'd like to congratulate the committee for doing such a nice job on it um, they did it almost perfectly complete without any mistakes on it, except there was one mistake. And uh, it comes from, the, the mistake comes in where, where the farmers store their manure during the winter time. <laughs> and, and the spelling of it is not like what's in the book. The spelling of it is L-A-G-O-O-N-S. Okay, so now we got that cleared up. <laughs> um, on page 21, water resources, uh, there's one brook that's left out of, the, out of that uh, list of uh, water resources. And, uh, and that is the one that uh, uh, is closely knit with uh, the Bethlehem Road. And I uh, checked with DEC to see what the name of that brook was. Now, I've been around for quite a few years. And I've always called it the Bethlehem Brook. So, but DEC calls it 1.6. So I think what the town board can do is the town board can make a resolution to give that creek a name. <laughs> uh, one of the reasons for it is in 1947, that creek nearly took my life. 
So um, that's why I'd like to have you call it Bethlehem Creek. <laughs> um, and uh, and the other thing is um, the uh, there there is there wasn't too much in here about retirees. So uh, which um, maybe I'll propose something uh, later on to the committee or whatever when it, when I get a chance. Okay, thank you. Thanks for your comments. And our next speaker. Linda Maddox. Hi, I'm Linda Babbitt, Youngsville, New York. I've lived there for shy of 37 years now, and I'm here to ask the board to please consider revising any language in the plan that allows for, leaves the door open for heavy industrialization. Certainly, I don't want to, we are not going to be repetitive, so some of my concerns I don't want to talk about here. However, in talking about property values and the environment, uh, we have many, many areas in the town of Calicoon that flood badly. It is um, not only eroding the brooks, it is eroding our property values, and there are many people dealing with this at this time. Before anyone even drills, not talking about accidents from a, uh, from a well, you have to have five clear-cut acres per pad. We are already getting wetter than we need to be, and a lot of it, of course, is from runoff. We can't control the weather, but certainly the board could consider changing the language to keep anything from coming to our town that adversely affects a situation that is already bad. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. <clears throat> Next speaker, please. Cindy Geiger. Good evening to the board. Cindy Kerpel Geiger. <clears throat> um, I'm from the town of Jeffersonville. I am a landowner. I come here tonight not only as a town resident, but as Sullivan <coughs> County Legislator. Um, just to address the Ca Town of Calicoon Comprehensive Plan, um, in accordance with Section 293 of the General Municipal Law, the Division of Planning and Environmental Management has been um, the responsibility to review the material submitted regarding the proposed comprehensive plan for the town of Calicoon. And I just want to tell you that I don't think it's happened in any current history that we have received so many letters opposed to the comprehensive plan and the inferences, the positive inferences to gas drilling. And I just want to hold up the stack because Every day I went into work and my inbox was flooded with letters from my constituents um, concerned about the comprehensive plan. Since the purpose of a comprehensive plan is to set forth the desires of a community's residents for growth and preservation so that they may guide policy and action, it is vital to obtain an accurate description of those desires. So I felt in coming down here tonight because I have a family and I was in the middle of dinner, uh, my husband's going to the barn, we have a farm, I, I could profit from gas drilling. Um, my responsibility as an elected official is first and foremost for the health and safety of my residents. So, in coming down here, I felt I would be amiss if I didn't to acknowledge that I heard the people's voice in these letters. So, I know, I believe every one of these letters you should have received because I forwarded them to my clerk, who I believe forwarded them to Janet. Um, I did read the plan the Farm Protection Plan as well as the Comprehensive Plan. And buried in those pages of document, the positive drilling, I think we need to consider the residents' concerns. Thank you. Thanks for your comments. Next speaker. Christian Grayson. Good evening. Boy, I don't envy you. <laughs> um, my name is Christian Graca. I live in Ka on Cato Road. Um, probably I'm one of the youngest people moving in here. I mean, I've been here only for six years. My wife for 15. 
And um, I worked really hard for the last 25 years to get enough money to be able to live here. I love this place. I love living here. At the board place. And, uh, and I believe so does everybody else. We all love this place. And um, our business is mo mostly with tourism. We bring anywhere between 1,500 to 2,000 people every year. Our business has been here for 40 years. And uh, every client that we talk to, and we mention about fracking, they say, well, if that happens, we're not coming. Right? Uh, there's the issue of the man camps. If the industry needs man camps, that means that most of the jobs come from people that are going to come from out of town, not for the people of this town. Some people are going to profit from, from the, the land lease, but the jobs are not going to come here. They come, the, all, most of the works, the engineers, the technicians, all of them, they come from, from Texas, they come from Louisiana, they're not going to be from here. So please reconsider. Thank you, sir. Next speaker. Jennifer Bergen. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Bergen. I live in the town of Calicoon on Cattail Road. My mailing address is Livingston Manor. I've lived here for 15 years. And I do love this town and this <coughs> land. Uh, and I have hosted most of those 2,000 people a year that uh, Christian just spoke of. And I can tell you that the people who come to stay with us and stay in our home are very impressed with this town and with the beauty of this land. And a number of them speak about wanting to buy property here. When they hear about fracking, they stop thinking about it. And they start looking at other counties and other towns where this is not being discussed. I also want to say that I have been um, kind of awoken <laughs> to this whole process, uh, or through this whole process, to how you guys function as the town of Calicoon. And I, I give you deep respect for the number of hours and the amount of time that you put in. Um, I don't envy you. I don't know that I want to sign up. <laughs> but I can tell you that uh, I am disturbed that, I mean, I've been to probably three or four town meetings this year, <coughs> my first ones ever, uh, after 15 years of living here. And I am uh, <coughs> amazed that this is the first chance that I've felt that I could speak. That disturbs me. And uh, it also disturbs me that it's so incom your comprehensive plan is incomprehensible to those of us who are driving by, putting our vote down as we walk through the voting booth. So I want to know how to make this comprehensible, to make it understandable for those of us who vote in this town. Now that I'm awake, you will hear my vote the next time around. Thank you very much for listening. All right, next speaker, please. That's all I have. Okay. I will conclude tonight's public hearing. Again, we'd like to thank everyone that has participated. Thank you for your courtesy, and I'd like you to drive safely on your way home. The board is always attentive. Um, for any discussions, our office doors are open. And uh, please feel free to contact me, any of the board members, to discuss this issue, which really is about the comprehensive plan. And again, I'd like to thank you all for participating and so courteously. Have a good night.